Ashuba, Icha. Icha means desire. Shuba means auspicious. Ashuba means inauspicious. So Ashuba, Shuba, Icha. Ashuba means inauspicious. Hirnakashiko. Shuba means Tadas Maharaj. So what one should not do? This Hirnakashiko. What one should do? Pralad Maharaj. <coughs> How Nashing there comes to protect <coughs> Pralad Maharaj is actually the seventh canto description. Sixth chapter of this, six chapters of this <coughs> first ten Shrimad Bhagavatam canto talks about Hirnakashipu's atrocities, what he does, how much how much cruel he terrorizes the whole universe. He creates so much of havoc in this universe. And because of that, all of them actually are scared of Hirnakashipu. All of them, in, in, except for Lord Shiva and Lord Brahma, because they actually they become completely invisible. Everyone else, Ganeshi, Kartike, Durga Devi, all of them are scared of him. Because Brahmaji actually gives him a boon that he cannot be actually killed by anybody. So he becomes very arrogant and powerful. But there's a background around this. You all know about Hiranyakashipu and Hiranyaksha. They both are brothers, right? So Hiranyaksha is killed by Varahade. <coughs> so after Varahade kills Hiranyaksha, Hiranyakashipu goes and consoles Hiranyaksha's wives. There are so many wives. So he consoles them. Don't worry. Everything will be fine. I will take revenge against Vishnu. Nothing will happen. Typical movie dialogue. <laughs> I will take care. My brother is killed. I will make sure that whoever it is, I will, I will make sure that they pay for it. And he gives a lot of quotation from the Vedic scriptures that who is born has to die one day. He tells all these things to the wives of Vinayaksha. They hear, they become normal after that. Then he becomes very angry that Vishnu killed his brother. They both are very close to each other. So wherever he decides, okay, I need to actually go and then um, terrorize. He starts finding wherever Vishnu is, but he's not able to find. He, he goes even to the, <coughs> what do you call the, the place of Vaikuntha because of his power, but he doesn't find Vishnu there. Vishnu hides in his heart. He's not able to find. Kena is not able to find. But then he says, if I have to actually find Vishnu, then I have to terrorize this whole world. So he starts actually giving orders to his friends, go and kill cows, kill brahmanas, destroy the yajnas. This is what you should do. These two you do, and then automatically everyone will actually become disturbed. And that's what we do today. Right? Cows actually are always disturbed. There's nobody valuing Brahminical culture. <coughs> when you say Brahminical culture, they laugh. Right? So it's become very bad. So when this happens, he, he, he looks at if somebody standing Vishnu's name, he chops their head off. So Narada Muni, as usual, is coming around, standing Narayana, Ray Krishna. And he's become very angry looking at him. He says, why are you chanting my enemy's name? Then he says, I always chant, he said, I'll kill you. Do whatever you want. Kene Kashmir actually has this very special sword. Does anyone know what is the sword, sword of Hene Kashipu? He actually borrowed it from Lord Shiva. It's called Chandrahas. After that, Ravana actually has the same, same sword. It's a very powerful sword. If you actually throw it on a person, it will go and chop that person. If it actually has blood in this, it will go to a nearby river, automatically wash, it comes back. It's a very special sword. You don't get these kind of automated swords these days. <coughs> So he uses his word, puts it on Narada Muni. It goes all the way, it goes through Narada Muni, comes back. Nothing happens because it passes through Narada Muni. Because Narada Muni is not a living entity like us or in this condition. He's a liberated soul. His body is pretty sure, so nothing happens. So Nikeshwar becomes very <coughs> disturbed. How do you get that kind of a body? <laughs> Let me also have this. What do you do to get this kind of body? He said, Chandra Krishna. <laughs> said, no, give me something else. He said, go to this Mandara Shala mountain. Mandara mountain. Meditate. Do tapasya. If you do severe tapasya on Brahmaji, Brahma will award you something which will be similar to this but not like this. <clears throat> then he goes and he meditates on Brahma but not in an ordinary way. Ferocious, terrific tapasya does. 
What is to follow Ekadashi? Yesterday was Nashim Kapilushi, fasting till dusk. <coughs> Early morning it was like, uh, you were full day out of fast today also. So you were halfway through, actually, little bit of water you can drink there. Mataji, is it okay? Can I drink little water? <laughs> so you actually talk and then find out. But he did not eat anything. He was standing on the tip of his toe, one toe, not both. He put his hand up, looking up towards the sky. And he actually meditated like that for many, many thousand years, 60,000 years they say. Not one year, not one day, not one hour, 60,000 years. So he became, literally actually he didn't move. So because he didn't move and there was flesh there, ants started crawling and started eating his body. Imagine how painful it would be. But he didn't get disturbed. That's a typical asura. Right? So he was so, so much focused on this and then he meditated like that. And eventually he became so powerful because of his austerity, <clears throat> he was just, his life here was just with the skeleton. And Brahmaji and all the demigods got disturbed. Oh, this fellow is doing something very big, so it's very dangerous for us. What if we ask Indra's position? But he was not interested in Indra, he wanted to be bigger than that. They couldn't do anything. Eventually, actually first time they disturbed him, First time they, they actually disturb him, uh, when, they, when he starts what, what you call meditating like this, um, Ganesh Ji and Almuni are planned, they come in the form of a parrot, right? They actually, what you call, somehow scream the name of Vishnu in his ears. He gets disturbed and he breaks his meditation and he goes home, right? That's how Prahlad is born. So, but after that he decides, I should not waste my time, I'll go again. So, he, he goes, comes back from under the mountain, he starts meditating. This time he is very determined, no matter what it is. So, he starts controlling the life here of the entire creation. So, they are all disturbed. They all go to Brahmaji and say, what is happening here? We don't understand because he, we are not able to breathe. Because he is controlling our breath also. He is not giving us oxygen to breathe. Right? So, Brahma says, don't worry, I will take care. So, Brahmaji appears, takes this water from the Kamandalu puts it on him and he immediately comes up, the whole body becomes very strong again, he prays and very humbly he says, thank you so much Brahmaji, you are the greatest person, you are the most greatest of all benedictors, thank you for appearing before me. If you think you want to give me something, give me this boon, this is what boon you want to ask us. He says, <coughs> I want to be deathless. Brahmaji says, okay, of course, even I am going to die one day. Why are you asking me something from me? Everyone has to die in this world. Right? It's not possible to... In this world, it's not possible. In the Vaikuntha world, you can be eternal. He says, no, no, I want to be death this year. It's not possible. Ask something else. Okay, then he says. Then he uses his brain. He's a very intelligent guy. So he says, okay, I should not be killed in the day or in the night. Inside the house or outside the house on the land or in the sky, right? by an animal, not by animal, not by a human being. And he starts giving like this and finally he says, not by anyone you create. Because Brahma created everyone in this world. Right? So he asks everything is done. Then he feels very happy. Brahma says, okay, anyways whatever you ask is going to happen. Somebody is going to come and kill you. So he gave it and then he disappeared. Now, then he understood nobody is there and all these devatas are like, yeah, what kind of boon he has got? So they get scared, so he conquers everyone. He first of all attacks Indra, finishes it off, gets everything, the throne, he sits on the throne and controls the entire 14 planetary systems. The entire creation, 33 crores demigods, devatas become his servant. In fact, he created the situation so, like if he actually feels the sun is so hot, you just look at the sun, and sun has to adjust the temperatures for him, <laughs> right? And if, if he wants rain, he will go and tell, he will not even tell Indra, he will just signal Indra, and Indra has to pour rain. He had made them like menial servants. He, the entire world was there under his control. Imagine, if you had this kind of control, how life would be. You go anywhere, you don't have to talk about your boss, right? at home also, nobody will be, you will be in full control. How nice it will be. You will be happy? You don't want, but will you be happy if you have that? Will you be happy, no? Yes. But actually, Hiranyakashi was not happy. <laughs> no, why he was not happy? He had everything, all the powers. Even personalities like Ganeshji, who is actually so powerful, 
or Durga Devi were actually under his submission. If he tells Ganeshi to do this, he has to do that. No questions asked. He was such powerful. <coughs> he was not, he was atripta. He was dissatisfied, unsatisfied. He was not satisfied. Why? Achitya Indriya. The Bhagavatam says his Indriya senses were uncontrolled. He controlled the entire creation, but he couldn't control his own senses. One time, you know the Alexander the Great? Alexander captured a yogi. He told the yogi, he actually was, yogi was meditating peacefully. He caught the yogi and said, go and get me some water. The yogi didn't bother to respond. He was peacefully sitting there. He became very angry. And he said, you know, I will actually chop your head off if you don't listen to me. So the yogi said, you are servant of my servant. <laughs> and how can you chop my head? And Alexander became very puzzled. But Alexander was an intelligent king. They asked, how can I be your servant? Servant. He says, actually anger is, you are a servant of anger because anger is controlling you. But I have conquered anger. I don't get angry at all. So anger is my servant. So you are the servant of anger. So you are the servant of my servant. I like that and say, oh, nice, nice logic. Okay, you go. <laughs> right? So like that, although he had everything, all in his control, he couldn't control his own senses. And because he couldn't control his own senses, he was dissatisfied. Unless your senses are actually very satisfied, you will not be satisfied. And senses cannot be satisfied by sense gratification. One time in 1968-1969 in San Francisco, uh, Srinath Prabhupada's disciples actually uh, conducted Narsim Kedudashi like this. In that, they actually had made a carob cake. Uh, heard about carob? Cocoa? So cocoa, normally the devotees don't eat it because it actually has a little bit of brain uh, stimulant. They, they do something called uh, carob cake. Carob looks like or tastes like cocoa, right? Hmm? Chocolate sabji, okay. So they made the cake and then after offering this one devotee was just waiting, he was so attractive cake after a long time I'm going to get. So he got this piece of cake and then took it in the plate with all dal rice and everything at the cake also. The first thing he actually took is the cake with so much of expectation he built it. But actually this cook who made this baked this cake forgot to put sugar in there. <laughs> <laughs> so when he actually bit it, he couldn't actually see it was like it's, it's, his uh, tongue actually wanted to spit it out. That's it, Prasadam. No wastage. So, okay, so what to do? He was eating this, but then so much of disappointment. He couldn't accept it. <laughs> Maybe actually, I actually bit it a long time. Let me eat some dal rice. Maybe my tongue is sweet. <laughs> he ate some dal rice and after that again bit it. Very test. Right? So, he was finding it very difficult to accept it that such a thing can happen to him. Likewise, this material world, no matter what you try, you cannot be satisfied. Hirane is the, at the pinnacle of all enjoyment, but still he was not satisfied. <coughs> so he continued his life like that, but eventually Prahlad was born, his son, very cute. But Prahlad was actually trained by Naradamuni or mother? Naradamuni. Naradamuni. What happens when, when um, Jirene is actually meditating tapasya for 60,000 years. Indra understands this guy is letting him meditate. Meanwhile, I will conquer the world. So he goes, catches all the asuras, eats them left, right, and center, catches hold of his wife also, Kayadu, and takes her. Indra's role is like that. He, he, he sees wherever beautiful women are there, he will take them to his palace. So, but then Narutri stopped him. He said, She's carrying and Prahlad. He said, Yeah, yeah, I know that. That's why I'll take, I'll kill Prahlad and bring her back. He said, you are a fool. Prala is not an ordinary person that you can touch him. He is a Mahabhagavat. He is actually a great devotee of the Lord. There is a past time of how Prala came to be Hirnya Kachipu's son, but I am not going to cover it this time. <coughs> but Prala somehow was Hindu and Kayadu um, requested Azmuni, let me not deliver this child now because Hirnya Kachipu is not at home. Um, Nazmuni says, don't worry, you stay with me in my ashram. So he took her to the ashram and he spoke about Lord Krishna's, Krishna's glories. And the baby, Talad, heard all these things. And Kayaji was thinking about Rena Kashiko. She never heard anything properly. So, Prahlad from the womb was trained to be a Vishnu devotee. 
So when he came out, <coughs> you know what happened? Kenny Kashibu is this extreme. He was always looking for control and enjoyment. Material education is all about that, right? We all want that. We want to actually control. That is why we go to school to learn how to control things. And once you have the controlling capacity, you know how to enjoy. But spiritual education is totally opposite of this. Spiritual education makes you the servant of the Supreme Lord, expert servant. And that's what is going to actually give you a lot of pleasure, not the power to control and enjoy. Because if all of us are going to control and enjoy, who will you control? Each other. So how will it work? It will not work. Only Krishna can be the Supreme Controller. <coughs> so it goes like that. So when, when he was born, five years or four and a half years, five years, Prahlad Maharaj, then automatically <coughs> school problem came. Now also is there, good problem with school support, right? But it was not that simple in sending to a tuition. It was more complex. <coughs> he had to send Prala to a school. What did they plan to do? <coughs> Kayaju and uh, Yene Kashipu discussed. Yene Kashipu wanted Prala's mother wanted Prala to be happy, but Yene Kashipu wanted Prala to become like him. Happiness is secondary, automatically will come. If you actually are very powerful, you get it. So they send him to the school. <coughs> you know what is the name of the school? Shukracharya is the, actually the spiritual master of the Asuras. Like Brihaspati is the spiritual master of the Devatas. So Shukracharya had two sons. One of, they are named Shanda and Amarka. Name sounds very different. Huh? But they are, they are like Brahmanas, but very powerfully trained on Asuric principle. So he sent them <coughs> this to, to the school. Uh, the school name was Shandan Amarka <coughs> Asuric Vishwa Vidyalaya. <laughs> <laughs> so the training was very simple. In every language, mathematics, physics, chemistry, they will train them. So if you say mathematics, their way of training is Indra is walking with five devatas. One Asura comes and kills two devatas. How many devatas remain? <laughs> <laughs> so that's how they get trained. Right? So then from day one, actually, the Asuras, oh, devatas mean they have to kill them. Devatas mean they have to kill them. So they get trained like that. The Taliban kind of training. So day, day one, it starts. Right? Chemistry means very simple. If you add so much sand, one, one liter of so much sand, half liter of milk together, what will be that con? Screwdriver, something like that. Some name has to come out. So you have to put tick. Yes, this is called this. So that's how they used to train. That's how they train how to enjoy material life. That was the only kind of training that school taught. And Prahlad Maharaj was already trained in spiritual principles. He had no interest in this. He used to sit and quietly listen all these things. And after some time, when there was a break, he called all his Asura friends, please, my dear friends, Asura friends, come sit here. And he taught them Krishna is the Supreme Person in Godhead. All these things, what they are teaching is a waste of time. So he, they, he brainwashed all of them. So they were all chanting Hare Krishna. They were all singing Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Krishna Krishna, Hare Hare, Hare Rama, Hare Rama, Hare Hare, Rama, Hare, Rama, 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 Hare Hare. They were dancing. So these two teachers came back and like, what is happening? <laughs> I never taught all these things. They are singing the what you call names of my master's enemies. It is very bad. So they took Prahlad aside and said, What are you teaching them? Who taught you all these things? He said, No, I already have all these things. It is in my heart. Just like you actually have all this material education to the core, I have this spiritual education in my heart automatically. I don't need to actually ask anyone, it's just there. He didn't tell that Narada Muni trained me. Because this this Asura is dangerous. <coughs> so he took it like that. And they were confused. They took they took Pala to Hene Kashibu. And he told Hene Kashibu, this two sons are, I mean this, this boy is actually spoiling our class. Hene Kashibu asked him, asked Pala, what is that you are actually trying to do? What are you learning in the school? <coughs> He said, family life is a deep, dark well. <laughs> one should actually, my dear Asura father, one should leave the house 
and we go to the Banam forest. Forest means Vrindavan forest and meditate on Vishnu. That's actually the goal of life. One should not spoil this opportunity that you have in the human form. Hinakashipa was very angry. Hinakashipa always thought the Supreme is him because he knew he is not going to be killed and he actually was doing. Imagine if you actually are doing something, some activity, and the activity works fine. Eventually, you feel like you are very powerful. You think it's going to happen, it's happening. So, Hinekashipu was doing like that. Hinekashipu, whatever he decided to happen, it used to happen. So, he became very powerful, very arrogant. He couldn't think somebody can be there beyond him. We should also understand, as in spiritual life, we have to become servant of the Supreme Lord, servant of the spiritual master. <clears throat> one time, Hridayan, Hridayan Maharaj, one of Shri Prabhupada's disciples, uh, wrote a poem. In that poem, he actually addressed Vishnu, Krishna. He said, he mentioned, I am actually, I am in the bottom last portion of the poem, he said, I am a devotee crying for your mercy. Please bestow your mercy. Okay, no poem. <laughs> I am a devotee crying for your mercy, my Lord. Please bestow your mercy. Prabhupada said, everything is okay in the poem, don't ask him to put the word devotee there. There is no devotee here. We are all trying to be devotees. Devotee means Krishna speaks to them directly, like Arjuna is a devotee. Hanumanji is a devotee. We are not a devotees. We are trying to be devotees. Ask him to put, I am a servant of the servant of the Supreme Lord, crying for your mercy. Ask him to change it. <coughs> Prahlad was in that mood always. He always looked everyone as spirit souls. Everything In everything he saw spirit, he saw Krishna is there everywhere. Whereas Hena Kashyapa saw the opposite of that. All, if anything he saw, matter. Anyone, anything he saw, okay. He saw someone, this person is meant for my enjoyment. This person is my, meant for my enjoyment. This whole creation is meant for my enjoyment. That's what he saw. Whereas Prahlad was looking at everything spirit souls. All of them are Krishna's servants. So they have to be engaged in Krishna service. That's the mood he had. <coughs> you all know about Yuri Gagarin? The one who went to the moon. Yeah, it's like pretty... <laughs> there's a joke also on that. Like, if Russians send some people there, they're called astronauts. Americans send, they're called astronauts. And in India send uh, coconuts. <laughs> anyway, so... So this Yuri Gagarin went to the space and when he came back, which is went or not, we don't know, but came back, he addressed, uh, he went to a school and the children wanted to know because it was a Christian missionary school and then that the priest, the father actually had told them, God stays there, God stays there. They always showed up and the rocket goes up to all the children, so all the people have gone there. So yeah, the first question they asked Yuri Gagarin was, did you see God there in the space? <laughs> he started sweating like anything. I don't know whether he went there or not, but he started sweating. He said, No, there was no God. I saw all directions. No, no, nobody was there. So, the, all the children are very disappointed. <laughs> so, the priest actually told the, the boy who asked the question, Don't worry, Yuri Gagarin did not see God here. <laughs> Why, how will he see him there? <laughs> there is no, no way he can see, right? That's why, even in the, in the Navar scripture, the Brahma scripture, it's mentioned. One has to actually start seeing the Lord here, not that he's elsewhere, he's there everywhere. Premanjana Churita Bhakti Virochanena. One has to actually get that ointment of love for Krishna. Only then you'll start getting the eyes to see the Lord. Right? <coughs> but anyways, um, this happened and then that whole Yuri Gagarin thing was actually a farce kind of. There are a lot of literatures around that. Nobody believes that these days. <coughs> but Here, um, so we have to understand that we have to be servants of Krishna. Learn to become servant of servant of Krishna. In the service attitude we have to uh, develop. But we all sometimes we, we many times actually we get confused. Krishna and Narsing Dev are they different or same? We have actually tested Jagannath as Narsing Dev today. Is he Narsing Dev or Jagannath? What is he? Today, nothing there. Is he happy? Is he in angry mood or in a happy mood? Happy. Is nothing there always happy or in angry mood? Angry. He is in happy mood. Okay. Very nice. 
we'll see. Actually, he responded back because Nashing Dev and Krishna are the same. He said, no, I don't think so because Nashing Dev looks very different from Krishna. He said, when Krishna wants to play with the gopis, he will play. But when he becomes angry, he won't play with the gopis. He will go with Hiranyakashi and plays with them. In angry mood, he doesn't play with gopis. But his father was not convinced. So they went to Mayapur. She is a Mayapur. The Radha Mala DTC is on the top. Radha Mala Vashtu Sikhi. We should all go there once at least. <coughs> so Radha Mala DTC. So his father was sitting there. And, and this is Radha Mala. On the left side is Nashing Dev. Same Nashing Dev. You see a Nashing Dev below. Jagannath Balde Subhadramai on the top. That Nashing Dev on the right side. <coughs> so he was sitting and then watching Radha Mala and said, How can Radha Mala or Mala and Kashi, I mean Nashing Dev be the same? So he was thinking like this and suddenly in Radha Madhav's altar, Madhav disappeared and Nashing Dev was standing there. And on this side he saw Madhav was standing there. And he was confused like, wow, this is amazing. Then after some time, he closed his eyes and saw again the Lord was like that. He actually called his son, do you see what I am seeing? What are you seeing? <laughs> I am seeing Madhav here and then and the Radha Madhav and seeing Nashing Dev there. So you are gone. Not true. <coughs> Madhav is there, Radha Madhav. Then later, actually, Janani Master, who is the chief pujari in Mayapur, explained to him, because you had the doubt, you had the doubt that they both are different. They are not different, they are the same. That way, actually, appeared like this for you to prove that's a fact. <coughs> so, anyways, coming back to, so we, they are not different. They are the same. You worship Nashing Deva Krishna, it's Krishna only. So, we also think sometimes we are the supreme controller because like Hiranya Kashipu thought, we also think sometimes we are controllers of everything. When you do some, some activity, there was one nice joke I heard. Once an old man was actually going towards the forest side and suddenly a tiger came. And the tiger actually angrily growled. So, but this, this old man was very experienced, very shrewd, very, what do you call, brave. Because he always thought he was a controller, he, he led a life like that. He told the tiger, look, I am a very old fellow and I, my blood is very cold. You catch hold of a young man, his blood will be hot and that will be very tasty for you. The tiger responded, don't worry, I feel like drinking cold drink today. <laughs> <laughs> so, we can't think that we are the only one who actually have brains. Even I think our brains. Only Krishna is the supreme controller. We cannot think that we are the supreme controller anyways. So this continued. Eventually, Prahlad preached to his father, please stand the holy name, go to the forest. He became more and more angry. He started, what do you call, um, putting a lot of um, punishment on Prahlad. Five-year-old boy. Look at the relationship. He made sure that let him go and then <coughs> struggle. Let him, when he sees the pain, he'll say, no, 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 I don't want to, I'll change. Whatever you say is fine. So you put him in a pit of snakes, poisonous snakes. These poisonous snakes were biting on the wood and the wood used to burn. That much poisonous snakes were there. They couldn't do anything. When they tried to bite uh, Prahlad, they had the teeth broken and all of them lying down. Right? So like that, actually, he was put into different, different places, put under the ocean with a lot of boulder on his head. Nothing happened. He was just Krishna protected him. Nashing they protected him always, all the time. There was no uh, condition that Nashing they protect, did not protect him. He gave him very, very poisonous substance to drink. Pralad Maharaj, as usual, offered it to Nashing Dev. This is what I am going to eat. You please take it. And when Krishna touches, everything is good. That way we should always eat what is offered to the Lord. When you eat what is offered to the Lord after doing Naivedya, that is offering to the Lord, bhog given to the Lord, then that bhog becomes prasadam. And that prasadam is actually antiseptic. It will not have any problem. It will be perfect. But if you still keep eating all this ordinary food, anytime anything can happen. We never know. Because the whole world is crazy. So, he was saved. Somehow actually he drank that, nothing happened to him. Likewise, they put him under fire. His sister was there, right? Holika. Holika actually had a boon from Brahma that any fire will not disturb her. 
So he called her, you take Prahlad and sit on you, make him sit on your lap, and put you in the fire. They put in a very big fire, she burnt, nothing happened to Prahlad. Right? Amazing. So the actually is explained how, how Prahlad was saved, um, basically because <coughs> he was always meditating on Krishna. Krishna protected him and all, not even one, one hair actually burnt in his body. So in every circumstance, Krishna protected him. There was no way, um, what do you call, he could escape. No matter whatever um, Prahlad uh, preached to Hrinakashipu, Hrinakashipu did not change. Many times we also are like that. We don't change so easily. We see one special mercy of Krishna. One time, one of Sri Prabhupada's disciples um, went to Prabhupada and asked Prabhupada, I'm, 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 I'm not able to leave one desire, maybe smoking cigarette. I'm finding it difficult. Prabhupada said, just leave it. He said, no, if Krishna gives me special mercy, then I can leave this. Sometimes we say, we are not able to chant Hare Krishna. When Krishna gives me special mercy, I will chant Hare Krishna. The Prabhupada said, do you know what is special mercy of Krishna? When, when you get special mercy of Krishna, first thing, he takes away all your assets. Whatever you have in your hand, all bank balance, everything gone. Second, all your relatives and friends will abandon you. They won't even talk to you. They will reject you. And third, everyone will severely criticize you. That you are an ally, like useless fellow. You want that mercy? <laughs> Special mercy? And this devotee told Prabhupada, I think I will follow on my own. <laughs> because it's very dangerous, too dangerous to actually take, wait for special mercy. Krishna is very, uh, he's kind, but then we should not ask for special mercy. Just ask for mercy. Everyone gets special mercy. When he wants to give, he'll give. We should not actually ask for it. Anyway, so um, that that went on. And and uh, because of the reason, only reason Hede Kashipu could not change all through his life. When Prahlad was there, Prahlad did not have any association. But he was associating with Krishna from within. Because he was a pure devotee. We all need association. The most important thing in our spiritual life is association. If you don't have association, you will not be able to make progress. Because Krishna has a plan for all of us. But do you understand what is the plan? Do you understand what is the plan of what Krishna has? Hmm? Yes, but individually how is he going to take? Everyone in the same flight? We don't know. Right? But Krishna has a plan for each one of us. But how do we know that plan? That comes through association. <clears throat> we have to understand that. That's why association is most important. Chanting Avare Krishna you can do at home. Reading Prabhupada books you can do at home. But understanding what is Krishna plans for us, you cannot do on your own. You need association. When senior Vaishnavas comes and shares, then you will start understanding these things. Otherwise, it's very difficult. I'll tell you, uh, um, there was once a, a, a devotee in the army, not in Indian army, elsewhere. So he actually gave a Bhagavad Gita to his mayor, major, commander. He gave him Bhagavad Gita book and said, every day he is asking major, did you read Bhagavad Gita? Did you read Bhagavad Gita? So he is actually getting pissed off, like what is this fellow asking me all the time the same question. Every day he comes and asks me, like, did you read Bhagavad Gita? So he saw this um, and the Bhagavad Gita is as it is, is big. You open it, so much is there. So he thought when you actually open after some time, he opened it. Every day he is asking me, I have to respond to him someday. So he opened and saw there was the whole shloka and then there was a translation and a big purport. So he thought, if I read the translation alone, I can finish it. It's a very small translation. So he quickly, in a few days, he finished the entire Bhagavad Gita, just the shloka alone. Only shloka, I mean not shloka, translation. And then when he saw this devotee, he told him, I finished Bhagavad Gita, I said, end to end, end to end I finished. And he was like, how soon you finished? He was very happy, the devotee. If you actually give a Bhagavad Gita to someone, and they read Bhagavad Gita, you feel happy. Like that, the devotee also felt very happy. On that night, this major had a dream. And the dream, Shri Prabhupada came. And Shri Prabhupada came and told, the devotee, this major, 
you can read the purpose also. <laughs> so this mayor came to this devotee who gave the book and said, Hare Baba, your movement is too much, man. <laughs> I have never seen any author coming in and telling the person to read the whole book. And you people actually are like, that's all the association of devotees, like following up. Did you read? Did you chant your rounds? Right? So without association, not get that. So he did that and then the major became a devotee eventually after reading everything. Imagine Prabhupada comes in a dream. What what consciousness that person will have? So like that they, they changed. He changed. Eventually he became a very good devotee. <coughs> He's still there in his con. <coughs> so this this whole thing association, how does it work? Example, I give you a I'm giving you a class in Sanskrit. How many of you know of Sanskrit here? You can learn, I mean speak, kind of, very nice. But if you give a class in Sanskrit, many of us won't understand. You may laugh because I laugh, right? So otherwise you won't know what, what I'm talking about. But if you have a translator who actually tells you what it is, then you can appreciate what is being spoken. Similarly, <coughs> Vaishnava Association is actually a translator for Krishna's will. Krishna is actually having a plan for each one of us. So when senior, senior Vaishnava comes and tells you something that actually gives you a proper, what you call, uh, direction. New people don't understand this thing. They find it very difficult to understand. That when you say this world has no fun, our, we have to go back to God. And they think actually this is, maybe the speaker is very frustrated. Otherwise they actually try, he speaks like this. No, it's not true. The Bhagavatam actually gives that this place is Dukhanayam Ashashvatam. Bhagavad Gita says, Krishna says that. But everyone appreciates prasadam. Even you people, they appreciate prasadam. Nobody says no for prasadam. But actually speaking, prasadam, it means we have to understand any situation Krishna puts us in, that is actually good for us. If you are in that consciousness always, that means you are getting perfected. No matter what condition you have been put in, understand that Krishna is putting you in that condition and chant Hare Krishna and be happy with that condition. Then you are in the right understanding. But it's very difficult to be in that. But, but you can follow that if you are with the devotees, not alone. That is why Western Association is very important. Anyway, so it is continued. And finally, Hinekashibu lost his mind. He decided, you tell me where are you getting this power from? And Prahlad Maharaj responded back to Venakashipu, the same person from whom you are getting the power from is providing me the power. He says, I want to see him. Because he never thought somebody can be supreme than him. So then what, what did uh, Prahlad say? Prahlad said, he's there everywhere. And Venakashipu said, he's there, he's there, he's there. And he saw a big pillar next to his palace. So is he there in this pillar? And Prahlad Mana said, yes, he is there in this pillar. And he Kashibu took his Chandrahas and threw it at him. Chandrahas is very powerful, right? So he went and charmed the whole pillar. But understand Prahlad Mana's commitment and dedication. Prahlad, imagine, normally when you actually say <coughs> Hina Kashibu is, or uh, we know this Hina Kashibu, Prahlad Mana drama. We should have done the drama here, it would be nice. Next time we should do the drama of Venakashipu and Prahlad. Right? So that, that's, that's a nice drama. We know in the drama, there will be only one pillar. And that pillar will be shaking because it will be usually a nothing there will be there behind. And he will have to stand like this till the, the, the pillar breaks. So we know that. <clears throat> everyone knows that. In the audience, everyone knows that this pillar behind pillar, nothing there will be there. Imagine somebody is going to put your gun on your head. Now you tell me, is Nashing Dev here or not? Otherwise, I'll blow your head. It's very difficult to. But Rala has the solution that this Lord will be there. He will come and protect me, no matter what it is. He said, he's there. Definitely is there. He will come. Because Inagashu wanted to see Nashing Dev. Maybe if somebody is going to give darshan, it is okay. No, he wanted nothing to come out of the pillar. He wanted to see who this person is. And Prahlad Maharaj, he said, he flashed it and who came out? Nashing there. Wow. Like he created such a sound 
many elephants actually passed through. They got scared what's happening in the world. Many people got scared and he, he screamed, roared like a lion. Roaring of lion is so powerful. He roared so much that for one moment Hiranyakashipu dropped his sword and everything down. He was shocked actually. He had never seen because he saw a lion but in two legs and he came out and he was looking at here and there. But it was not actually the time for killing Hiranyakashipu. So all of them attacked him. And he one by one, batch by batch, he killed all the demonic asuras. One by one, he chopped them off with his fingers and then chakra. He had so many arms, he was killing everyone. Now after then, time came, he caught hold of Yenagashipo. Took him, he dragged him to the place. Because Brahma had given him a boon, no? He had given him a boon. What was the boon? Neither not inside nor outside. So he went in between. Right. Everything that he had, Brahma had given him, he fulfilled. So you can always think that I am very intelligent, I can do anything to cheat that I am not going to die, but we are going to die one day because God is all powerful, very intelligent. And Hene is actually, we are mini Hene small, small Hene Not that bad, but not like Prahlad also. Right? So we have to understand. God is always powerful. Don't think of sense gratification. Think about how to get back to Krishna. If you don't do that, the one life will be wasted. Right? So, he killed him. How did he kill him? He took his nails. He didn't kill it with a weapon. And this nursing there was neither an animal nor a man. And he used his nails. Nails is not a weapon. But neither a living entity. Nails are not supposed to be living, it's a non-living thing. So he used a nail, but actually this Enyakashipu's body was like uh, stronger than thunderbolt. Even Indra threw his thunderbolt on Enyakashipu, it didn't do any harm. The thunderbolt can break all mountains, but nothing happened to Enyakashipu. Um, but he used his nails, chiseled, rip open his abdomen, removed all the intestines, put him on his head because there was nobody to garland him. Everyone was scared of going near him. Right? He garlanded himself. Chalo, no, you don't garland, doesn't matter, I will garland myself. He removed the heart and threw it away. And then Enagashiva was like this, dropped him down and went and sat in the throne, looking around who is there next. <laughs> and all of them are scared because if someone is very, very angry, they will not distinguish between who is the devotee and or who is the friend and who is the enemy. If even a friend goes, he will give him, why did you come here? Right? So, like that, he was in very angry mood. Lakshmi Ji said, I never seen my husband like this. <laughs> this is so much, is like, too much for, for me to go near. Then all of them said, Prala, you only meditate and call him, you only go. <laughs> you only don't know, he will be in the pillar and all this stuff. He told, he came, no, who will control him now? You only go. When Prahlad actually went nearby, Nashinga saw him such, although he was very angry, with such compassionate feeling, he saw Prahlad and he embraced him, he patted on his head and then he took him and put him on his lap and then actually embraced him and sat with him. And Prahlad was like crying like anything, you came to protect me. Uh, it's a very, very, what do you call, uh, one you can experience that when you actually see Nashinga, he came to protect the devotees. So this happened, um, and you know what happened to Hiranyakashipu, dead. And Prahlad prayed to his father, to Nashingde, saying that, thank you so much for delivering the whole world, but please forgive my father. Then Nashingde gave him a boon. He said, don't worry, Prahlad, not only to you, any pure devotee who worships me, for them, 14 generations, all of them will be liberated in their family. I will take care of liberating all of them. Why are you talking about only your father? Your whole dynasty, all of them will be liberated. They will all come to me. So that is actually the advantage of becoming a pure devotee of the Lord. Even in our family, if one person becomes a pure devotee, the whole family, generation up and down, 14 generations, all of them will be liberated. Which 14? Don't ask me. <laughs> Up or down, that is beyond my thinking. Some 14, okay. 
you can choose who you want. That uncle is not okay. His auntie is okay. So you can do all those things with Krishna, but uh, first try to go there. One, one time one devotee went and asked Prabhupada, Prabhupada, when you come to the spiritual world, how will I identify you? <laughs> Prabhupada said, how? Oh, very important question. <laughs> <laughs> you think about how to come there. From here, you are here in the material world, you come there. I will find where you are in there. When you come. <laughs> but people actually like think of something which is. No, no. <laughs> they think of something which is uh, sometimes crazy, but it may be a valid question for that person. Right? But people think like that. <clears throat> Anyways, so this, there are three or four contradictions which actually in this whole past time. One of them is actually. Lion and man. You know there are 84 lakh species of life, right? This one is not a part of that 84 lakhs. Because you don't see anybody with lion face and human body anywhere. That's the extra that Brahma didn't create. One extra. One extra thing is created. Because Varadev, Parashuram, all of them are part of the 84 lakhs appearance. This is the one extra. So contradiction. One extra added. Number two. <coughs> In the same position, two emotions. Angry and compassion. He was very angry with Venakashipu. At the same time, he was looking at a very, very compassionate eyes to Prahlad. How can someone show two emotions at the same time? He did that. And the third one, he had a very soft body. Venakashipu, Nashindeva's body is very soft. He is not all this muscle, muscular there, paint. Very soft, like very kind. But nails are like chisels. Very, very strong. Contradiction again. So these are three or four, there are many four contradictions the Acharya has explained. When you get deeper and deeper in understanding about Nashing their past times, then you start appreciating the Lord. How much actually is thinking of protecting his devotees, always thinks of protecting his devotees. Many a times devotees get scared of Nashing there. How many of you get scared of Nashing there? At least looking at him. Alone in the night, you are the only one seeing Nashing there. Oh my God. <laughs> right? Nashing. <laughs> Ah, yeah. <laughs> 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 so very scary, but this is not this is not a what do you call it? It's natural because sometimes we have that uh, what do you call it? demoniac tendency. When you have a demoniac tendency, when you see Nashing there, you will get scared. But if you are in a very calm mood, Nashing there will be very pleasing to see. <clears throat> there was one devotee in Mayapur. You know, the, the deity of Nashing there. There is there in Mayapur. Um, in the in the early uh, late 80s, actually Nursing Dev was installed in Mayapur. Ugra Narsima is. It's called the specific Nursing Dev is Tanu Narsima. So this Nursing Dev uh, was worshipped by two Brahmacharis, Jananivas Prabhu and Pankajangi Prabhu. And there was this Baba Siddhi Prabhu. This Baba Siddhi Prabhu was a young boy, American boy, maybe about in the early 20s. So he was asked to worship Nursing Dev. So he was very scared. When you actually do the aarti, you do the aarti, right? So you have to actually ring the bell. And ring the bell and do that. It's not an easy thing to do. When you actually do this, when you actually do the aarti and also ring the bell, it doesn't go. It will go like this. This and this, both of them will go like that. It takes some time to get used to it. But this devotee, the whole body was shaking. <laughs> he was so scared. If you make a mistake, nothing will come. Like that. So, he used to go back to his, the Brahmacharya Ashram is all of them sleep in bunkers. They have two, three bunkers, one of them, so he was sleeping on the top. And maybe in the midnight, or two o'clock, something like that, the bunker was shaking. And he thought, okay, maybe uh, the Brahmachari below is getting a pot, getting a bath. And he thought like that and opened his eyes. He saw Nashing there sitting on his chest. Mayapur Nashing there. He sat on his chest. And he got so scared. <laughs> Nashing said, calm down, calm down. And he actually took his hands, put him down. He actually pressed him down. Why are you so scared of me? I am very, very dear to the devotees. I don't harm my devotees. I love my devotees so much. I don't like non-devotees. I don't like demoniac people. But devotees don't have to get scared. So you can just be, you can worship me with your all your calm, very relaxed way. And I, I like to see you in that kind of a mood. And then he disappeared. And he woke up and ran to the altar. Yeah, he paid obeisance to Nashing there. 
and then it was Mangalarti time, 4 a.m. in the morning. So when he come, came, okay, was coming back, all of them are saying, what happened to this guy? What is this guy? Because he was wearing only the gamcha. You know what is the gamcha? Gamcha is actually the towel. He was only wearing the towel. <laughs> because normally the brahmacharis when they sleep, they don't, not like, you know, have a night dress, day dress and all this stuff. They just have the gamcha, so they sleep like that simply. So, he was saying, what happened? So next day, he actually spoke to the name of Prabhu. This is what happened, this is what happened. You can see the mark here. Nashing Dev's cloth mark was there on his shoulder because he had actually pressed him. The mark was there. Even today it is there. He's there in the US. He's serving, he's married now, he's working, he's, he's uh, serving in the ISKCON US. You can see that Nashing Dev, these are not actually yeah, what you call uh, um, some myth, mythological stories. This is actually uh, happened and it's happening. Nashing Dev is protecting all of us. Not only there are many other stories are there. I'll tell one more story before actually we start the arti for uh, <coughs> the for nursing there. Um, there was a girl, five-year-old girl, not Indian, five-year-old uh, girl in South Africa. So this girl was very attracted to this half man, half lion painting. She always used to actually see the nursing there, and then she was so attracted. She said, "My God, he is my God." So she used to go and tell even in this class. She is my god, and she will play. One time, she was holding a ball and playing in her house. Suddenly, the ball actually skipped and went to the road. It was a countryside road, and she was actually going to get the ball. When she was actually going closer to the road, a huge truck came. Yeah, the huge truck came on the road, and her father was there. He couldn't actually go and then rescue her. He shouted, please go and go to the road, stay back. But somehow, she didn't hear and she went onto the road. Father jumped from the first floor, but he got bruised, he couldn't walk and he felt very bad. And then looking at the site, when he actually saw that, the lorry actually hit her. And she was thrown somewhere. And he could he fainted. So at the same time, actually a police car was coming on the other side, and then police saw like what is happening then. And he saw that this girl has actually um, fallen off and he was very scared. I mean, lorry hitting a girl, imagine how much it is. When he got down and saw that the girl was lying there in the ball and immediately he carried her. He was very scared to touch also because it may be broken, right? How much painful it will be. But she was lying down, lifted, called the ambulance, but then the ambulance said like this is a very difficult case to handle. We don't have the equipment. Please call the, what do you call, bigger hospital. So the bigger hospital devotees came, I mean not devotees, the, the, the ambulance came, took her there and they got an x-ray done and the doctors came and this police, her father, all of them actually were talking to each other. They told this was the case, the lorry hit her and she would have, I don't know what is it. By the time the nurse actually got the x-rays to the doctor and the doctor saw the x-rays and they're like, don't play with me, get the actual x-rays. Like, this is the x-ray because the nurse didn't know what was happening. The x-ray was the bones were all normal. Everything was normal, there was nothing like that. It's like, how can this be possible because the lorry at such speed hits a small girl? No broken bones? So suddenly this girl woke up and said, Daddy, you know what happened? My, I was actually playing now, I went there and actually I was about to pick up the ball and the lorry came and it was about to hit me, I didn't know what to do. I called my nursing there. I called my Nashinde, Nashinde, please come. And Nashinde immediately came. He actually caught hold of me at my waist and said, Don't worry, everything will be fine. He lifted me and he dropped me there in the garden of the same. And nobody said, Nobody knows, no, don't worry. And she said this and said, He was so cute. And I, was very ha I was very happy looking at him. But I told him, You are. Class are very sharp. You should cut your nails. <laughs> because you can see here, and she has marks. She had marks. And the doctor actually examined, yeah, this is actually from a wild animal. A wild animal like a lion can actually leave a mark like this if it, if it uh, what do you call, pinches. And then uh, said, I'm telling you the truth. And nobody believed it. Then the doctor asked her father, what is this half man, half lion story? <laughs> Then the doctor explained, half man, half lion is our God, is Nashing Dev. When he explained everything, then immediately the doctor understood this is not an ordinary thing, he became a devotee.
The nurse became a devotee. All of them became devotees in that. Even today they are living in South Africa. Um, so, just actually, it's, it's a fact. If you actually, with a very innocent heart, pray to Narsing Dev and ask for protection, and then ask him to take all the material desires. Because the material desire is the most difficult thing to give up. So then I get attached to you all the time. Ask such kind of things. Because this world is anyways temporary, it will go away one day. Right? So, um, that's that's the mood one should actually be in. Getting any, any questions? Venture over there. Yeah. So that is the God. The Hiranyakashipu was traveling on this journey, right? Mm. Why didn't Narsingh Dev appear then the writer for Bhagavan Mahārāj? Very nice question, actually. Why did Narsingh Dev not appear? Right? They went and asked Brahmaji. Brahmaji, um, this guy gave me all, like, all the boons to him. Um, and he was torturing us. He, he would do something, you know, call Narsingh Dev to kill him. If Narsingh Dev was supposed to come. Brahmaji said, Aray, yaar, itanaar ashriti kya hai. Thoda enjoy karne ke liye bolo na. I think actually enjoy for some time, no? If we actually, <laughs> so much, 60,000 years you actually do tapasya, within five days I'll kill him, it'll be very bad, no? But the concept of protection of devotee, no? <clears throat> so, that was actually a joke. <laughs> okay, but actually speaking, when they approached Vishnu, Vishnu actually told, <clears throat> Hirana Kashipu actually is meant for he has so much of, because of the tapasya, he has so much of piety. That piety has to be removed. If you have pious activities with you, you have money. You can expend till you become zero. Police won't. Even police come, you give them money. Then you can escape. But when you don't have any money, then problem starts. So that money will actually go away when you do Vaishnava Prat. And this, every God are not that like Vaishnavas. They are okay Vaishnavas. Pranas Maharaj is a pure devotee, Parama Vaishnava. So if you if you disturb a Parama Vaishnava, your credits will go down very badly. And Hirana Kashku tortured such a person. Then it became. But 60,000 years of such austerity standing on one toe, it's not an easy thing. He wanted to become the supreme and he was given that. And he gave you and immediately you remove it, it will not look nice. Right? So he said when Pranas actually is tortured, then I will appear. Till then, please tolerate. Because you only made a mistake. You all made a mistake. That's why you became powerful. Right? So, so like that, uh, that, that's the reason actually. They waited for Pralal to come. Then you will have a story, no? That is the internal reason why yeah. the Lord appeared story. Actually, the Lord appeared for five reasons. Did you know? He did not appear simply like that. He appeared for five reasons. Uh, it's mentioned first thing is Prahlad called, he's there inside the pillar, he appeared. Sak Jai Vijay, Jai Vijay, Jai Vijay. Yeah, Jai Vijay. So, uh, because it's Jai Vijay, uh, Kumara is actually cursed, right? That episode. For Kumara's sake, he appeared. Third is Brahmaji. Brahma said, somebody will come and kill you, but that person we don't know. I, I, he, he's not created by me. But he appeared saying that, yes, your rule and all is fine. You, I'm not created by you, but I'm killing him. With all the rules you are given. Boom. Third, then the fourth one, um, Madhu Ketap hmm? is a different pastime. That's a different pastime. This is a different pastime. So, first is Brahmaji, uh, then Prahlad, then Hiranyakashipu himself. He said, I want to see where is your God, show me. I really want to see you. You're calling about Narasi, Narahari, where is Narahari? Let me see. He said, Here I am, you've been looking for me, you know, I'm here right now. I'm ready to actually come in front of you now. So, fourth, Right? Uh, Hirnakashipu, Pralad, the Kumaras, uh, Brahmaji, and the fifth one, uh, who's that? Fifth one is, uh, I forget, it's just slipping off my mind. <coughs> huh? Uh, fighting Rasa is there, so that's, that's it, but for somebody he comes. Uh, in, in fact, as I said in the earlier, right, when Krishna wants to fight, he becomes Narsingh Dev. Who can fight for Narsingh Dev? Of course, my Madhu Kaitapa also is a different pastime where Vishnu wants to fight. He fights with uh, Madhu and Kaitapa. Right? Is it Madhu? Huh? Is it Pralal's mother? Pralal's mother? No, Nadmuni. Thank you. Because you said Pralal's mother, I remember Nadmuni. For Nadmuni's sake, he appears. Because 
Nanpuni actually told Prahlad, think that Vishnu will always protect you and will appear whenever you really need. And Prahlad said, he's there. Because Nanpuni had promised him, Vishnu will always appear to protect you whenever you want him. And that faith Prahlad had. And that's why he said he's there in the pillar. And out of pillar he came. Nashindir came. To prove the point that Nadamuni cannot be wrong. So these are the five reasons that he appeared on that. Right? You have a question? <clears throat> so that's there are a lot more details to all these things. Each chapter, if you see how Hirinakaship actually tortured six chapters of that the, the torture actually is pretty funny way, just like this. The training of how um, Prahlad Maharaj goes to Shanda Navarka, they, they actually have a lot of fun there. How the training go happens. These are all explained to some extent there. And Narsimha Puran actually has more details about it, the exact how it happens. They don't give you the exact uh, um, how Indra walks with the Devatas. On that, that level, they don't they don't explain. It just says the Asuric way of explaining mathematics and things like that. Like Taliban. Actually, Taliban, I was, I was looking at the new, internet. You know how Taliban trains their children? You'll be amazed actually. It, it, it's um, pretty interesting. That's why they become very angry with everyone. It said, if you actually shoot a bullet, which is actually showing at 400 miles per second, and if you shoot at Russia, how, if you actually shoot three times, in one minute, how many bullets will go into the, into the skull of a Russian? That's a question they ask. So they only get trained, I am supposed to kill one, I'm supposed to kill everyone. So that's why they train. So that the Asuras always have natural inclination to fight with the Devatas. Otherwise, how can they become like that? How can the Asuras become inimical to Devatas? It's because they are trained like that from day one. If we train our children like that, they will also become like that. But if you understand, if your children are trained to be a devotee of the Lord, at least have the exposure, they become devotee or not, it's a different thing. That's not under your control. You can only give them facility, right? But you cannot force them to become devotees. That's all it is, right? So this whole past time about how Nashim there comes out of um, the pillar, then what do you call it? Every time he comes, did you know that? Every Satya Yuga, Nashim there comes and there's a, there's a past time of Vinaya Kashyapa Nashim there. But every time it's not the same activity. Killing of Vinaya Kashyapa is there. But every time he comes, it will be different, different activity. Just like if you, every summer you may go to a hill station. But do you do the same activity every time? Similarly, Nashim Dev also will not do the same activity. Boring, no. So every time it will be different, different. Sometimes it's mentioned, one time, Hirne Kashyapa built a huge palace, ground. The ground was 800 miles, indoor stadium. I was sitting inside and having a match and Nashim Dev appeared inside. He came inside and then full air conditioned. He, he came in and, and there were missiles that time. Jet. There were all jets. In the had all air, airborne attack that time. So the missiles and all used to go. And Nashingri actually had the air, we call lion's head, no? Lion's air. So all these missiles used to come and it used to touch the, the hair of Nashingri and become ash, one by one. Any missile comes, so Hirnikashi was so bewildered and Hirnikashi used to fly on the air and fight. And finally, he somehow brought him down, made his lab, tore him open. That actually happens in the same, the tearing open, because he has the same bone, right? The bones will be a little bit different sometimes, underwater, not in the water, not in the land, not in the sky. So the Lord knows how to actually handle that. You cannot cheat the Lord. Yeah, like that. Any other questions? Okay. Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Krishna Krishna, Hare Hare. Hare Ram, Hare Ram, Ram Ram, Hare Hare. Nashinde Bhagwan Ki Jai.